Right, so we're looking at another electrostatics problem. And in this question, it starts off by asking us to state the principle of conservation of charge. Now, the principle of conservation of charge is like any other of your other principles and laws and definitions that you need to really spend some time studying. Um, the principle of conservation of charge has a key word in there that will help you to remember what it's all about. And that key word is conservation. Now, if I conserve something, it means that I'm not allowing it to be destroyed. And that will kind of guide me in terms of my answer. The principle of conservation of charge states that charge cannot be created or destroyed, but simply transferred from one object to another. So that would be the answer to that question. Then in the next question, they give us a diagram. And in our diagram, you can see that we've got sphere A, and sphere B and they also indicate that the charges for us. You'll notice that the one on the left sphere A has a charge of 4 nanocoulomb and the one on the right has a charge of negative 8 nanocoulomb. So from this already before we even look at the questions you can already see that they've got opposite uh, charges so therefore they might be attracting each other. You can also see that these charges are given in nanocoulombs so you, you need to remember when you do calculations that you need to do conversions of those units. Then the question says that these charges are brought close together so that they touch. So they are brought into contact with one another. Now when they're in contact with each other, they will transfer electrons. They are then separated. And the question says, what would the charge on each be after separation? So what they're asking us to do is to calculate the new charge. Therefore, Q nu is equal to Q1 plus Q2 over 2, which is going to be 4 times 10 to the negative 9 plus negative 8 times 10 to the negative 9. And all of that is divided by 2. Remember that here yeah, you can use your values in nanocoulombs, but it's a good idea to convert it to your base unit because you convert in all of your other equations and that in that way you just remember what that you need to do conversions also if I then need to later use this value then it's already converted for me the answer to that question is negative 2 times 10 to the negative 9 coulomb and you can see that I have put the unit in there it's very very important then the next question says in which direction did the electrons move from A to B or B to A? Now, if you look at your diagrams, you'll see that B has a negative charge, which means that it has an excess of electrons. A, on the other hand, has a positive charge, which is a deficit. Therefore, when electrons are transferred between these two spheres, you'll find that the electrons will move from B to A, and it will always move from the sphere that has the most electrons to the sphere that has the least amount of electrons. This can be positive and negative spheres. This can be positive spheres only or negative spheres only. Then if we move on, it says, will these spheres attract or repel each other after touching and give a reason for your answer? Now, once these spheres come into contact, they will share their electrons until their charges are exactly the same. Now, if they've got the same charges, it means that like charges will repel. Therefore, the answer to the question would be repel because they have like charges. Question, the next question says that charge B then comes into contact with a neutral sphere. So we're making contact again. But now the contact is between sphere B, which already has a new charge, and a neutral sphere. So you need to make sure that you use the values from your previous calculation. We now need to work out the new charge. And again, I do that with Q nu is equal to Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. Q1, we can now use negative 2 times 10 to the negative 9. And remember, this is the value that I got in my previous calculation for the charge of sphere B, plus 0. This is 0 because the sphere that it's in contact with is neutral and I divide that by 2 and that gives me an answer of negative 1 
times 10 to the negative 9 coulomb. Again, remember to put your units in. Then they ask, how many electrons were transferred to the neutral sphere? So they're saying to us, the sphere was neutral, and now it's got a certain charge, which we've calculated as negative 1 times 10 to the negative 9. And they want to know how many electrons were added onto that neutral sphere in order to obtain that specific charge. In other words, we are given the Q value, our charge, which is negative 1 times 10 to the negative 9 coulomb. They want to know the number of electrons. And we are also going to use QE. And remember that this value you will find on your periodic table. You don't need to try and memorize that. If I put that into an equation, it will be Q is equal to NQE, where Q is negative 1 times 10 to the negative 9, because this is now the charge that has been created on the neutral sphere. That is the total amount of charge that was transferred to the neutral sphere. Is equal to N, my number of electrons that I'm calculating for my question, and negative 1,6 times 10 to the negative 9, which is the charge of a single electron. And if I do that calculation, I'll find that this is 6,25 times 10 to the negative, sorry, that's a positive number, times 10 to the positive 9 electrons. Again, this is a very big number. That is okay, as long as it's larger than 1, and as long as these answers for the number of electrons are whole number multiples. Right, moving on to the next question. They give us a new diagram, and in this diagram, a negatively charged balloon, right, represented by A, is suspended, and there's another balloon, B, and they are suspended, and they, they tell you there that A attracts B. Now, from that, we can already see that if there's attraction, it means that these charges are opposite charges. So on my diagram, I'd like to indicate there, before I even att attempt to answer the questions, I'd like to, to indicate there that A is negatively charged, and because it's attraction, I know that B will be positively charged. And now I can go and look at the questions. It says that they touch each other and they move apart under mutual force of repulsion. And it says there that we need to now state whether the following statements are true or false concerning balloon B before it touches A. So they want to know before B and A comes into contact, which of those are accurate? Which of those are possible? Now, first of all, you'd know that because this is attraction, B is definitely not negative. So in our first question, question A, it says B may be a positively, positively charged. Now that is correct. That is true because if B is positive and A is negative, they will attract each other. Then B says B may be a negative charge. That is clearly false. Because they are attracting each other, the charges cannot be the same. And then question C says B may be neutral. This is quite unlikely but it is possible because if B was neutral, A and B would still be attracted to one another. A would cause induction on B and that would then create attractive forces. Then if we go on to the next question, it says, what is the charge on B when the balloons move apart? And give a reason for your answer. Now, the only thing that we can say for sure is that those charges will be the same. First of all, because they are touching each other, they will share charges until their charges are equal. So we know for a fact that the charges will be equal. But we cannot say for sure whether it will be positively charged or negatively charged. Let me explain why. Let's say you've got three scenarios. Scenario A, you've got a negatively charged sphere A, and you've got a positively charged sphere B. Now, if these come into contact and they share their charges, their charges will be shared until they have like charges. But now, if this was a very big 
charge. So let's say, for example, 8 nanocoulombs, whereas B had a very slight charge to the order of 2 nanocoulombs. You can see from this that after contact, both of them will be negatively charged. However, we don't actually know what the values is. So it's also possible that A had a very small charge and B had a very big charge. And in this case, they will both be positively charged. So because of this, in our answer, we cannot say for sure that they are both positive or both negative. So all we can say is that they have like charges. And the reason for that would be that there's repulsion taking place, which indicates like charges, but also that they were in contact, meaning that they shared their charges until their charges were equal. If we move on to the last part of this question, we now see a new setup with a new diagram that was given. And in this diagram, they tell us that Stephanie and Neil are investigating what will happen when a charged object like a ruler is brought close to a neutral object. Now this we've done many times, rub a ruler on your hair and you can lift up a piece of paper. But they want to do an investigation. So they, they indicate to us there that they have a small neutral ball. So this is neutral. And they've attached it to a piece of string. And they also have a perspex ruler. And now they tell us that there was a silk cloth that was also used. And this silk cloth was rubbed on the perspex ruler until the perspex had a negative charge. So we can put these negative charges on the perspex ruler. Now they want to know what is going to happen when these two spheres come close to one another. That's what they're investigating. So the question says, explain the difference between a charged object and a neutral object. On the left hand side, we see a neutral object, our balloon or our sphere. And you can see that this object is neutral. What that simply means is that our positive charges and our negative charges are equal in number. So there's the same amount of electrons as there are protons. On the other side though, we see a ruler. And on our ruler, which has a negative charge, there will be an excess of electrons. Now, if it's negatively charged, it means that there's a lot more electrons. If it's positively charged, it means that electrons have been taken away. Protons cannot move. So whenever you're making reference to charges that are moving, it's always extra electrons or excess electrons or electrons taken away, which would be a deficit. We never refer to protons as moving. They ask us, where, were electrons added to or removed from the perspex rod during this process? Now, I've, as I've already explained, you cannot change the number of protons. So if this ruler is negatively charged, then it simply means that electrons were added. And now we have excess of electrons, thus the negative charge.